The title of my message is, What Are You Putting Your Confidence In? My opening scripture can be found in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 26. For the Lord shall be thy confidence and shall keep thy foot from being taken. If you want to make sure, excuse me, if you want to make sure you do not get stuck in the devil's snare, you need to make sure that you have total confidence in the Lord. One of the greatest tools that the devil uses is division. He knows that the house that is divided will not stand. So he works to cause confusion and misunderstanding among God's children. In Mark's gospel, the third chapter, verses 24 through 26, and if a kingdom be divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house be divided against itself, that house cannot stand. And if Satan rise up against himself and be divided, he cannot stand but hath an end. The devil and his kingdom is not divided. They have one mission, and that is to destroy as many souls as possible. The devil and his demons have no compassion for you, and he and them will get pleasure out of getting you to fail. The hour we live in right now is a fearful one. But if you keep your confidence in the Lord and trust that he will make your path plain, then you will remain safe. Divisions in the church is nothing new. The devil has been stirring up trouble for thousands of years. Paul wrote this in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 10 through 13. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind, in the same judgment. For it hath been declared unto me of you, my brethren, by them which are of the house of Chloe, that there are contentions among you. Now this I say, that every one of you saith, I am of Paul, and of Apollos, and I of Cephas, and I of Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were ye baptized in the name of Paul? Take heed to what Paul is trying to get across to the people. Christ was the one that was crucified for us, and we are baptized in the name of Jesus. Miracles and healings don't take place through our names, but through the blood of Jesus Christ. But are you in the habit of looking towards man for your deliverance or for your help? Yes, man can help you to a degree, but no one can help you as much as Jesus Christ can help you. And in John chapter 16, verse 23, and in that day ye shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it you. Man, can man make this promise to you? No. The only one that can make this promise to you is Jesus Christ. We can have confidence that God will be with us through all the fiery trials of life if we will wait patiently for his deliverance. The Lord lets us know that temptations will come, but he will provide a way for us to escape. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, there hath no temptation taken you, 
but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that ye may be able to bear it. Do you feel like you are being attacked from all sides? That your foundation of your relationship with the Lord is being shaken? Do you feel like running away and hiding because it's just too much? Well, take to heart. This is nothing new. The devil wants you to feel this way because he knows if he can get you to run away, you won't be standing in your place for Christ. Elijah was a great man of God, and he so showed such confidence in the Lord when he had Ahab gather all the people together of Israel and the prophets together and proved who was the true and living God. In 1 Kings chapter 18, verses 19 and 20, through 21, now therefore send and gather to me all Israel unto Mount Carmel, and the prophets of Baal, 450, and the prophets of the groves, 400, which eat at Jezebel's table. So Ahab sent unto all the children of Israel and gathered, all, and gathered the prophets together unto Mount Carmel. And Elijah came unto all the people and said, how long halt ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him not a word. The people didn't answer Elijah because they were confused. They didn't know who to believe. But the Lord was willing to prove himself through signs, wonders, and miracles. And Elijah had confidence that God was going to show the people that he was God and not Baal. So he laid out a challenge before the people so he, they could know the truth and not be deceived. In 1 Kings chapter 18, verses 22 through 24. Then said Elijah unto the people, I, even I only, remain the prophet of the Lord, but Baal's prophets are 450 men. But let them therefore give us two bullocks, and let them choose one bullock for themselves, and cut into pieces, and lay it on wood, and put no fire under, and I will dress the other bullock and lay it on wood and put no fire under. And call ye on the name of your gods, and I will call on the name of the Lord. And the God that answereth by fire, let him be God. And all the people answered and said, it is well spoken. Elijah knew without a doubt that the people, that, excuse me, that God was the only true and living God and that Baal was a false God. And he was going to, and he had complete confidence in God that he was going to prove to the people. After the false prophets for hours prayed to Baal and cut themselves, trying to reach the gods, finally they gave up. Elijah didn't have to pray for hours for the Lord to hear his prayer and respond. His prayer took less than a minute to pray. In 1 Kings chapter 18, verses 36 through 40, And it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord, God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, let it be known this day that thou art God in Israel, and that I am thy servant, and that I have done all these things at thy word. Hear me, O Lord, hear me, 
that this people may know that thou art the Lord God, and that thou hast turned their hearts back again. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust and licked up the water that was in the trench. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and said, The Lord, He is the God. The Lord, He is the God. And Elijah said unto them, Take the prophets of Baal, let not one of them escape. And they took them. And Elijah brought them down to the brook Kishon and slayed them there. God proved himself to the Israelite people because they had forgotten all the miraculous things that he had done in the past for them. We can't afford to forget all the miraculous things that the Lord has done for us through this Jesus ministry. I know the Lord is in this place because he delivered me from devil bondage. The Lord didn't have to rain down physical fire from heaven upon the altar of my soul because he rained down the Holy Ghost fire from heaven and baptized me with the evidence of speaking in tongues. He gave me supernatural proof of his greatness and I have confidence in the guidance of the Holy Ghost that lives and dwells on the inside of me. But the devil can make you lose your confidence if you're not careful when the trials and tribulations of life come your way. Elisha did a great work, and he destroyed the false prophets. But he let fear take him over, and he ran for cover. In 1 Kings chapter 19, verses 1 through 4, And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, and withal how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. And Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me, and more also, if I make not thy life as the life of one of them, by tomorrow about this time. And when he saw that, he, ar he arose and went for his life and came to Beersheba, which belongeth to Judah, and left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a juniper tree. And he requested for himself that he might die and said, It is enough now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am not better than my father's. Elijah should have known that God was going to protect him from Jezebel. But in his moment of weakness, he was ready to give up and he wanted to die. Child of God, have you ever felt this way before? Maybe you're feeling this way now. That's what the devil wants you to feel. That's what the devil wants you to think. He wants you to feel worthless and that you're not making a difference. The devil wants you to rest under the juniper tree and rub your wounds, so to speak, and feel sorry for yourself. We need to keep our eyes on Jesus and what the Lord wants us to do in this final hour. We need to keep our confidence in Him, not in people. In Romans chapter 8, verse 31, what shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? The whole world can come against us all at once. But if God is for us, then he, we are protected at all times. I love the story in 2 Kings chapter 6. When the king of Syria 
sent an army to capture Elisha because he knew that Elijah was sharing secrets with the king of Israel. In 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 14 through 17, therefore sent he, meaning the king of Syria, thither horses and chariots and a great host. And they came by night and compassed the city about. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, and hosts compassed the city both with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, Elias, master, my master, how shall we do? And he answered, fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. We have to remember, when it seems like the enemy has us surrounded on all sides, that there is always more of us than of them. We need to open our eyes so we can see the salvation of the Lord. We have to have confidence that the Lord will protect us from the deceit of the devil. And if we will remain faithful to him, we have to do our part and stay in the word. If we find ourselves not taking time like we used to with the Lord, then the devil is trying to draw us away. We have to take time with the Lord. You have to remain separated from the world, no matter what others are doing. In Ephesians chapter 5, verses 8 through 12, For ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. We live in a world now that it seems that anything goes. People are openly sinning, and they do not fear the judgment of the Lord. The devil is putting blinders on people, and they can't even reason with God because they would rather hear what people are saying. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 through 5, this know also, that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. We need to pay attention to this last scripture. They have a form of godliness, but they are denying the power of God. A person can seem godly, but when they start to deny the works of God, then you better run from them. We can't lose sight of the fact that this is God's ministry, not man's. It's God's ministry, and it's led by the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Peter and some of the other apostles were commanded not to preach in Jesus' name. They still went forth and preached. 
They were then brought before the council, and the council were going to slay them. But there was a Pharisee, a doctor of the law, that spoke up and gave great advice to the council and was able to spare their lives. In Acts chapter 5, verses 38 and 39, And now I say unto you, refrain from these men, and let them alone. For if this counsel or this work be of men, it will come to naught. But if it be of God, ye cannot overthrow it, lest happily ye be found even to fight against God. People who fight against this ministry are not fighting against us. They are fighting against God, and that is dangerous. Child of God, be careful who you listen to. Remember how the Holy Spirit drew you to this great work, and don't lose sight of your calling. Sinner backslider, you can have confidence in the Lord, and He wants to deliver you of your sins. In 1 John Chapter 1, verse 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. It's not God's will for anyone to perish, but it's up to you whether or not you want to accept Jesus Christ into your heart. I can't force you to accept Jesus Christ in your heart. The Lord can't even force you to accept Jesus Christ into your heart. It's up to you. But the Lord may stop knocking on your door and asking you to accept Jesus. That's why it says in the Bible, today is the day of salvation. Friend, I'd like to give you this opportunity right now to ask Jesus Christ into your heart by praying with me. Say, oh God, save my soul. Forgive me for my sins. But I have come home to serve you the rest of my life. And I believe that the blood of Jesus washes away all of my sins. Come into my heart, Jesus. Come on in, Jesus. Friend, if you meant that prayer, you have Jesus Christ in your heart. Let's get your miracle for you. It doesn't matter what sickness or disease is in your body. God made you. He can heal you. At this time, put your hand on your listening device. And those of you that are watching, put your hand on the screen right now, up against mine. This is a form of laying on of hands. So at this time, just, just yield on over as I pray for you. Lord, Heavenly Father, you know what their need is. Break their bondage and set them free. We curse every sickness, every disease in their body. Heal in the holy blood name of Jesus. Heal in the holy blood name of Jesus Christ, I pray. And let everything come to normal in their body. Amen. And friend, look for every sign of improvement and always give God the praise, the honor, and the glory. And write to us. We'd love to hear from you and how you're doing. You can email your testimony to testimonies at ernestangley.org. Now, friend, I'd like to encourage you to go on to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. All you have to do is just send up those glories right to heaven by just saying glory, 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 one glory right after another, and just expect the Holy Ghost to come in. Lord, Heavenly Father, I call down this great anointing upon them as they yield on over to you, receive ye the Holy Ghost, receive ye the Holy Ghost, and just keep on praising him. Just keep on praising him until he comes on in. In the blood name of Jesus, amen.